Yeah, I want to get to I want to get to that part about how we we prevent that. But I also want to just zero in, and then I want to get into you know uh, more about the the specifics about the dynamic of lies. But be, before we do, the, this concept of, of of fascism coming you know um, via an individual. I want to I want to read a quote to you because you know what you what what you talk about in terms of lies, and and we'll get there in a moment. Um, th- this quote stuck with me. Uh, you know, in part because uh, the journalist who who um, who 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 was expressed to uh, had imparted it to me years ago. But um, it is um, he, he was talking to an aide of the president uh, and he was told that uh, the journalist was told that guys like me, not me personally, but this is the journalist, um, are, are in what we call the reality based community, which he defined as people who believe that solutions emerge from your judicious study of discernible reality. That's not the way the world really works anymore. He continued, we're an empire. Now, when we act, we create our own reality. And while you're studying that reality judiciously, as you will, we'll act again, creating other new realities, which you can study too. That's how things sort out where history's actors and you, all of you will be left just to study what we do. You write that the 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 lies that are being told by a fascist are the reason why their followers are immune from those lies being disproved is because they are speaking towards a greater truth that is uh, like normative and aspirational. That quote was from the George W. Bush administration. So I wonder if there isn't a like very fertile ground that Donald Trump is working with that he is tilling more than seeding. Uh, yes, I mean, that is a, a, an important quote. Like if you take this quote individually or out of its context, I will say it ranks very high in the fascist scale. Now, the question, of course, regarding the Bush administration is to what extent they were willing to go all the way uh, in, in these beliefs, uh, you know, in their own lives. And to me, the impression that I have is that they were more traditional in the way they approach life, more hi- hypocritical, if you will, someone like Dick Cheney and so on. Uh, whereas what I see here, of course, there is a, you know, uh, the result of the statement like that and, you know, uh, and, and uh, um, were uh, very consequential. But even then, you didn't see this demonization of the press. Uh, and here, is, I mean, the press is very important because it is through the press, uh, through journalists, that we citizens are able to gather facts in order to, you know, to make judgments about reality. Uh, so my point is, like, if you compare, you know, the, not only, uh, you know, if you put the statement in its context, as, as wild, as radical as it was then, I think it looks mild uh, vis-a-vis what's going on right now. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, and the best example of this is this, uh, you know, one of the, uh, you know, huge lies of Trumpism, which is the idea that you don't need to wear a mask. And, and to me, that is the perfect example. And I talk about this in the book. That is kind of out of the fascist playbook. Uh, and in the sense that what, what is a better example that this belief in lies that eventually can be lethal than the president's own refusal to wear a mask, which is kind of dangerous. So the point is that, you know, if, if we won't prove that Trump believes the stuff he says, well, this is a perfect example because he's putting himself in danger, uh, you know, science will tell us, because of not wearing a mask and, uh, you know, uh, in, in, uh, in terms of his interactions with people and even uh, huge crowds. So that's even risky for himself, but he believes in this. And that, this, this goes back to other examples, I mean, uh, which were more consequential, uh, uh, perhaps in terms of, you know, the horrible outcomes that they provided, such as uh, the Holocaust or Hitler's uh, war. I mean, Hitler himself thought that, uh, that, that uh, Nazism was so formidable that it didn't matter, you know, in terms of military numbers, I mean, which were the chances. He was sure that they were win a war on all fronts against uh, the Russians and the Americans. And he was willing to risk everything, including his own life, for that. And he did. So you might say, okay, uh, sometimes this kind of uh, belief in, in life is uh, certainly more problematic than hypocritical politicians. Because of hypocritical politicians at some point will, will stop. 
Um, and I think even the Bush administration somehow stopped it and check wars. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and here, a certain in fascism, you don't see that. They go to the end. And they sacrifice even themselves for the lies. Uh, and the bad part, of course, is that they sacrifice many other innocent lives along the way. And we see something similar, uh, or let's say we see many parallels with what's going on with the uh, coronavirus in this country. So, so uh, the lies of a Bush administration are are tactical on some level. Although, you know, that quote to me sounds like, um, you know, there's a there's a distinct um, rejection of, you know, uh, material intangible reality. But the lies of a of a, a fascistic leader are are existential on some level and. Well, but but I mean, when you describe someone who is um, asserting a truth that is demonstrably false, and they believe that they have a um, a a more direct line to a hidden truth, uh, which certainly sounds like Donald Trump, but it also sounds like a madman, like like someone. I mean, that's almost like the definition of someone who is clinically deluded i mean in the sense that it is it is uh, uh, you know uh, in every in every, in every psychotic you see an attempt to deny and escape from reality now when i mean but to me i argue against that idea in the book in the sense that i mean i'm not that interested uh, about whether you know uh, trump is clinically uh, the range, because to me, I'm interested in the politics of this. Right. Which is to say that these are lies that are believed by many, and the leader believes uh, that uh, that he personifies the truth. Uh, he personifies the truth because he is part of a cult. Uh, he's part of a political religion where 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 he's a godlike figure. Hitler saw that like that, uh, and 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 I think we see insta- instances of this uh, in Trump uh, as well. Now, the point is that what do the fascists do uh, when uh, reality does not conform to their lives? Because this is a risky, the, the kind of, uh, you know, the, the kind of uh, very dangerous dimension of this. Yes, I mean, that to, me, has, that, that to me yeah, sounds okay, like sorry. you're describing the Republican National Convention that's going to take place in, in a month or so. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, it's a perfect example uh, of... Uh, of you know, uh, extremists believing the lies of the leader. Uh, but now uh, the problem is that this affects, you know, the entire, it might affect the entire city of Jacksonville and the rest of us. Well, yes, and we're a, seeing it in Arizona. Mean, the, the, we're seeing it know, in Florida. Best, we're seeing it in Texas yeah, right now. Yeah. I mean, the best example of this, I mean, a uh, horrible example, by the way, is that, you know, the Nazis, uh, one of the big, uh, b- you know, the big lies of the Nazis was that Jews were uh, dirty and they spread disease. This was a big, big lie. So uh, uh, let's say a non-fascist person would say, yeah, well, this is not, this cannot be proven by reality. Uh, it means then that it might be false. So the fascists did not think that because Hitler said so. And, and basically what they did, as you know, is turn reality uh, into a lie, but in a way, reality changed, and it be, and the lie became a reality. What I mean, let me be explicit about this. So Jews were certainly not dirty, uh, and, and certainly did not spread disease. But the Nazis created artificial conditions in ghettos and concentration camps, where you know, with horrible unsanitary conditions, with you know, lack of food, violence, and so on and so forth. Jews eventually, in concentration camps and and ghettos became dirty and spread disease. So the fascists eventually will say, you see, Hitler was right because Jews are dirty and spread disease. But this was based on the, the fascist uh, successful attempt to turn a lie into reality. I, I mean, that, now, that, yeah, go ahead. Well, that, that actually is, I think uh, that example is what, um, w- what, what inspired my uh, r- recalling this quote, frankly, which was, um, you know, you look at uh, the situation as it is, and uh, we create our own reality, and that, that's exactly what was done there. Yes, and the quote, I mean, in my book, you can find, uh, you know, from the 1920s and 30s, some fascists arguing similar things. I mean, I have, a, for example, an Argentine fascist in the book, famous fascist Leopoldo Lugones said, 
It's not that we don't believe in empirical truth, but we believe in a truth that transcends and is more important than, than empirical truth. And this truth is absolute, is the truth of a religion, and it's a truth which is based on faith, on faith, not in faith in the leader. It's not based on, on data. So here, I mean, the, the paradox here, or the, you know, one contradiction here is that what fascists, and I will add Trumpists, uh, understand as the truth, the rest of us, we have to regard it as a lie because it cannot be demonstrated. In fact, it is, uh, you know, reality demonstrates against its tenets or its axioms. So the idea that you, that masks are, you know, masks uh, are not useful uh, against the virus, uh, well, that's the idea, that's a, that's a lie. Right. Um, so, so this is a, this is how it works. I was, I, you know, in the, my throughout, in my, you know, in my seven books on, on fascist dictators, dictators and populists, the key issue for me is not only how it works, but why people believe in this. What, what is the mechanism that allows people or or prompts people to believe in this? And one of them is the belief in a leader that knows it all. And it's just easier to sort of outsource those questions, right? I mean, this is um, the, I mean, that's, that's in, uh, I think, you know, studies of orthodox uh, practice of religion is a, a similar dynamic where people just, modernity or whatever the, the era that they're living in, uh, it's much easier to sort of outsource like, you know, uh, the, your, uh, as many um, questions and answers to those questions as you, you, you can, uh, what do I wear today? Well, uh, one of the, the benefits of, of practicing a, a, a highly orthodox religion is that, um, that answers, you know, there for you before you wake up, uh, what do I eat? That's already there. What don't, what don't I eat? That's already there for you. I mean, these are, these are questions. It, it, it gives you a very rigid, uh, guidebook on how to live your life. Yes, I mean, but here the big problem is that this is this uh, uh, you know fanatic uh, way of being religious is displaced into politics, and and that is and there thereby it becomes uh, you know violent and lethal because what is what used to belong to the sphere of religion now is part uh, you know is the alpha and omega of politics is the center of politics, uh, and this is uh, you know this is how it works. So basically, what you have is. Uh, uh, a leader that believes uh, uh, himself to be a god or a god-like figure, and he believes his followers sh should follow him accordingly. So you have this displacement of religion into the political sphere, and, 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 and the result and the outcome is intolerance. Because, I mean, how can you argue against some, uh, one's own faith? This is not demonstrable. It's a matter of who, do, who, I mean, it's a matter of belief, not of demonstration. But when this is applied to politics, it's very problematic because it leaves the rest of us as being unfaithful. To what extent, uh, in your in your your study of fascism, is fascism a function of of capitalism and the uh, and 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 the commensurate economic immiseration that occurs within a capitalist system? Well, I mean, fascism, uh, you know, in the beginning, uh, many people believed that fascism was just a branch of capitalism. And, and history demonstrated that it's much more complicated than that, uh, because fascism works well with capitalism. Certainly, fascism is always a right-wing ideology, and it's, always, it's, it's never against capitalism. But it also it has its own imperatives. So sometimes, eventually, you you, you know, uh, German capitalists did not want the destruction of, of Germany that Hitler provided, eventually. But they work, you know, they work really well, uh, you know, for some time. So the big mistake, I think, uh, you know, by conservatives and, uh, 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 and even uh, capitalists is to believe that they can, you know, they can ride the horse. That in a way, that is the wrong, you know, that is, that is mistaken. Uh, so fascism worked well with capitalism until capitalism or let's say capitalist or economic imperatives became a problem. As you know, uh, instead of, you know, using trains uh, to help the world economy, Nazis decided to use those trains to kill Jews. Right. And this was not based on a capitalist logic. Now, there is another element here, another layer, which is equally problematic. Let's say, in the same way that capital, I mean, they, they model themselves after capitalism because the Nazis, I mean, particularly when they kill. 
Uh, but they changed, the, they reformulated the entire thing because if in Fordism or, or Taylorism, what you had, you know, in a, in, in a capitalist line of production uh, was uh, producing obviously uh, wealth and a product, what, they, what the Nazis did is create a, a kind of line of production to produce debt, not surplus value or not, not profit. So the profit for the Nazis eventually was debt. Their priority was to kill, not to earn money. If they could earn money along the way, great. Okay, and so um, it, it, I, I and I and then I that dynamic of the capitalists, uh, you know, thinking they can ride that horse, um, and the fascists in their uh, extreme version are um, uh, they're not seeking, uh, like you say, a, a profit. Uh, are the uh, circumstances of capitalism are sometimes giving birth to the horse, as it were? Uh, you know, uh, a really uh, an excellent historian of fascism, Jeff, Jeff Ely, uh, also an historian of the left, he, he has a really good idea about this, that there are certain political and economic uh, situations that, at least in the 1920s, uh, they were uh, fascist-producing situations, let's say. Obviously, if you have a, uh, you know, a political crisis uh, coupled with an economic crisis, you had this, uh, let's say you have an entry point or a pathway for this kind of magical, magical solutions to very complex problems. So in a way, uh, uh, fascism thrives on crisis, certainly. Fair enough. But on, the other hand, but, but on the other hand, if you focus on Trump, the economic situation wasn't that bad, but he was in a way uh, faking uh, the situation of the, uh, an economic situation. He denounced an economic crisis which was not there. So here we return to the issue of life. In a, in a way, it doesn't matter as much whether you have an actual political crisis or an actual economic crisis, but whether lies about those things, whether these lies are uh, believed. Uh, it's, it's, it's a fascinating uh, look at um, something that, uh, you know, I got to say, uh, kudos on the timing. <laughs> Um, uh, well. uh, I wish I, I wish I, I couldn't, um, uh, you know, uh, say that, but, uh, yeah, the timing, me, me too, me, me too, <laughs> me too. Well, uh, the book is a brief history of fascist lives, uh, Frederico Finkelstein. We will put that, uh, we will put a link to that book at majority.fm. Thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, folks. Uh, we're going to 